So when did J.R. Ewing discover he was an environmentalist? Well, J.R. Ewing has always been an environmentalist. <laughs> Anybody with any forethought knows that we're running out of oil. And the process of running out of oil, the price is gonna go up and up and up. The estimates are we have enough oil for 15 to 20 years. What do we do after that? What do we have set in stone now? Larry, I want to thank you and Mai for having us at your absolutely stunning home. It's gorgeous up here. What first interested you in solar power? Well, about three years ago, a tree fell on a power line in Ohio, and the whole eastern seaboard and part of Canada went out for about, I don't know, three or four days. Right. And then I thought, well, I have a little farm here, not terribly big, but if I can't get water to grow things, we wouldn't be able to do that because electrical pumps get it from 410 feet below the ground into a storage tank and then we water and so forth. So it was kind of a survival trip. I mean, mm -hmm. I just thought, what do we really do without electricity? And you have a, a, a pretty large place, so you have actually three arrays that mm -hmm. power the whole entire place. One for the well and two for the, the home here. So now we're gonna walk out and check out Larry's solar panels. Quite a, quite a view here. Not too shabby. This is the 31 kilowatt array down here. So this is one of three arrays you have on the property, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And how much of your energy does this generate? It's about a third to a half of the electric usage for the year. Wow. Is, is generated on this array. That's amazing. So now we're actually standing in front of the second array. The structure is also sort of environmentally friendly. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we used um, recycled plywood uh, scraps from the plywood industry. Okay, so there's not a virgin tree in this structure at all. And so you can talk about how much energy this one produces? Yeah, this array produces approximately 6,000 kilowatt hours on average per month, a little bit more in the summer, less in the winter. Um, this takes care of the rest of uh, Larry's electric bill. I think when we first talked, you said that you were paying upwards of $2,500 a month uh, in electric okay, bills. Okay, April of 05, uh, I paid $2,800. 06, I paid $13. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a big difference between 2813. This solar system is feeding power into the already existing electrical grid. Correct. And because of that, Larry then gets credit and actually is paying much less, if anything, for his electric bill. Yeah. This is an appliance that pays for itself. Right. And we're looking at about a 10-year payback for this system here. So with a 25-year warrantied lifespan on the panels, he'll uh, save a little bit of power and money over the years. What would you say to other people who are interested in getting involved with solar but, but uh, don't necessarily know enough about it or don't think they have the means? Okay, say you're buying a house or building a house. If you put in solar, if you're going to sell it, it'll certainly be an incentive for people to buy it. And as long as you're taking out loans, take out a loan for this too. And I think the banks will do pretty well with that. They'll, right. they'll give you some more money for solar. And look down the line. If you think electricity is expensive now, wait five years. Right. When the price of oil goes up, it's going to double. So, so you're a big solar proponent. Do you think that it's the responsibility of certain celebrities, or celebrity in general, to, to get the message out about um, solar power and other environmental issues? No. 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 <laughs> it's my responsibility sure. as a person. <laughs>